drive them mad and they'll all leave us. Then I'll get better ones. You'll never find such excellent maids as ours, easy. I shall. You're not overconfident. You won't find it easy. Not in these There's days. There's always some work. And all the interviews, the fussing, the training of them once. Some of you had as many cooks in turn as you had doctors. You got to 15 of these. And in the end, did I not employ the one I want? But can you keep her? Are you trying to quarrel? Not quarreling. Just warning you. Don't need a warning like that. More than you think. Without me to guide you. You would tumble in a ditch and your temper with you. You'd better think of me. You've got half an hour before the snail arrives. Perhaps you've forgotten you've not had breakfast. Only takes five minutes. I insist that you eat a proper breakfast for your nerves. Feel the better. What relief will at last you nervous. Oh, no, oh, no. Why should she forget? And the ten days in Palermo which we spent sitting on our luggage. It's because the keys were missing. That's because you were with me and you caused hard confusion when you're traveling. Don't start that again. Oh, God. As if I have ever troubled you. Simply by being here, you get in my way. Your perpetual presence. Other husbands go off to the office. And the extra work you make. But not for you. For who then? For the poor servants. Tell me who gives them the orders here. I have to supervise everything. And be sure. Everything's all right. When you're here, why the telephone never stops ringing? Why don't you leave the servants to answer? Who would ever tidy up? I know, don't tell me. It's all up to you. Well, up to whom if not to me? Choosing menus? That's a pleasure, not a labor. Then all the cleaning and the kitchen, the cellar, the attic, the food, the food. Nonsense. The garden. The gardener does it better by himself. And who would pay the house accounts? I would pay the bills gladly. And you'd pay them twice over. Then the ordering, the groceries. That's something I know you really can do. But it's hardly serious kind of work. Not the kind, maybe, that stupid man can hope to understand. Stand. I'm not such a fool. But thinking the whole day through. Does thinking seem such a hard, strenuous labor then? The hardest of all, for me at least, exhausting. You see, that is just what I beg to differ. <laughs> That's truthful. The artists or the scholars, the true creators. That is real thinking. And working like that should be enjoyment too. For me, work is a pleasure. No need for you to do it. And the house would not come to grief. Life would be living rather more simple. And everything here would very quickly go to pieces. Oh, come, you old charwoman. When thousands and thousands of families live their lives more simply, and perhaps rather more smoothly than we. Then death would be better. And life would be better. Of course, the way that you were raised, you never knew anything else. 
You talk as if you were born in a castle and reign like all the about queen. Your Don't you dare compare them with my distinguished Two country. distinguished counts from here. Look, you do better to go back to bed instead of inflicting your beastly morning moods on me, carrying on and shouting and finding the same old boring excuse for a quarrel at the time when I'm trying to keep my head and racking my brains to be certain that everything's packed. That's what I am here for. No, you just confuse me and Anna. Have you no wool in the fur? I think so. Yes. Button hook and your gloves and toil of water. But has Anna never forgotten? Oh, never give her the six strokes of the limo. And now you can talk to yourself. Breakfast. Have you got all the master's things? The sandwiches? The ham rolls, the thermos of hot milk. Is the cake securely wrapped? Won't the raspberry juice run everywhere? Ten hard boiled eggs, most nourishing. It's so important when working hard that one is nourished properly. Anna, don't you agree? The master's in a noble state. No, Gnipro. Not that I can see. Let us hope that nothing happens on the journey. Has he got his medicine? His patent gargle? The compress? All packed, guinea frog. I confess, we are so glad when he's got off safe. And then, guinea frog will grieve, crying every morning and evening. So sad all the long day through. Oh, well, with the child. Alone in the empty house, in this small, tedious peasant town. Gnidig of Frau, it is such lovely weather. Why not go to Bogging today? That bores me. Oh, well, if you think so. You've not forgotten to pack his extra pillow? Of course not. Don't make quarrel. And if I and you, when you go on leaving for ages, you should have a very serious conversation with your wife. Yes, if my wife were reasonable. You are insulting. Well, you're not exactly charming either. I will not allow such a talk. Ah, and I. You. And what should I say you, to you then? You are a real musician. That's right. And in your opinion, that means I'm less than nothing. Not quite. Only I hate this living in public, the artistic venue, and all that goes with it, all the life of an artist, and your shame. Before. But the sleigh has arrived. So soon. 
such a face I saw in the mirror. Gnei Frau, the tax man is here with the farms. I knew it. Five minutes after the master has left here. You see now everything that's unpleasant goes to me. Him. You'll have to send the forms on to my husband. Yes, Gnei Frau. Oh, I quite forgot. I'll ring anyway, I please. Give me 178. <laughs> <laughs> this is Frau Hofkapellmeister Robert Storch. <laughs> please, dear Frau Pritek, when are you going to let me have the rosehip compote? Well, of course, for cooking with. You know, it makes the only kind of jam my husband likes. And when he's working so hard, he must have his rosehip jam. So please don't forget it again. Thank you so much. If you treat people properly, you can twist them round your little finger. Of course, Gnei Frau. Gnei Frau. About today's meals. How often must I tell you to come right into the room and not hang about in the doorway? What shall I cook? <laughs> Whatever you like, you know what to do. That you should annoy me further. Really, Gnei Frau, really? I told you to give me my shot. When my husband loves me, and if I doesn't get in the crowd, do too. You know why? You know I need it here. Think for yourself. How could I live? takes care of all that sort of thing. One of them said to me the other day. Can't you see I needed to keep my household going? I hardly find the time to have my head on or dress myself. And you say that I should now forget my duties and loll in hotels like a lady.
often asks for your advice. Yes, that's because he knows well. I'm far more practical than he. He too is extremely practical, but sly. With a pleasant cunning that I lay no claim to, I come right out with what I'm hearing.
terribly sorry, dear Fräulein. My husband would have a thing or two to tell you if he were here with me. Where have you been hurt then? That's not the sort of thing I tell to a stranger. My name is Baron Lumba. Are you related to the general, Baron Luma, who commanded a regiment in Linz? The one whose wife was upon me at my birth? They are my parents. Oh, delightful. I am Frau Hofkapellmeister Stoch. My husband is a famous composer. Can I help you in any way? Thank you, no. I feel much better. A little sport for your four weeks. My parents used to know your parents. Knew them well for the lips from the rim. <laughs> I was a governor's wife for whom they said, let us hope that she commands only her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to visit me? With the greatest of pleasure. Once again, please forgive me. Oh, well, only next time try to be somewhat quicker. Oh, be busy. I'm yours to command, Edgar Brown.
just tonight only. If you are here for your health, sir, you must be very careful. Tomorrow morning I'll really start. Good, under my direction. My husband tells me I am the doctor he knows. But I'm afraid that the walls will soon be ending. Shall we join them? Let the frown dance as night as ever. And would you believe it? My husband will never dance. For he tells me dancing makes him dizzy. <laughs> but I love to dance. Haven't you an armchair, my husband? 
doesn't share the one he likes. That's just the thing. To raise a good girl, you bring it here at once. The bed can stay. Far from the window. For as you know, with a migraine, one must sleep with the windows open. At his age, 22, I believe. So young, all the same. A migraine, hereditary, it seems. Oh, believe it. An uncle was committed. Therese, these drawers must be thoroughly wiped with a damp duster. Everything is clean, I assure you. Forgive me, please. I must insist on it. You've no idea how dirty it gets here with the tourists and central heating. I know from seeing my own windows here. Can you give him breakfast? Of course. Perhaps from time to time some cold supper too. He mustn't go out every evening. You know how young people so require indolent habits. Well then, Trebian, he will pay you by the week. My husband gives me plein pouvoir. Well, was arranged, and I will send my protege and take good care of him. Air the room well before you heat it, and I'll come back here to inspect. Remember me to your husband. Yes, of course. I see everything is just as wipe the drawers with a damp duster. That is all important for keeping well. I understand these things. My husband tells me a doctor is what I should have been. And look at him, always well. Adieu, a fever He really is a very nice person and exceedingly shy. Because of his severe migraines, no, that's not right. Migraines. He must have a holiday before he begins his studies in earnest, and so he's free all day. He shares my passion for sport, for brisk walks, and for fresh air. And so he makes an ideal companion for your sad, neglected, lonely wife. <laughs> That's well put. That's what I should tell you. Your sad, neglected, lonely wife. Don't have a mind to object to them. Well, he might object to lonely if he knew I'd invited the Baron here to dine. More than once. 
Hmm. Anyway. The other day we went to a delightful dance at the Grundelze Hotel. Only it was horribly stuffy there. The Baron is not well off. And, and his family takes no interest in his intellectual pursuits. So I promised him that you would do something for him. You will, won't you? He deserves it for having made himself so agreeable to me. I must close for today. Keep healthy. Don't smoke too much. Don't work too hard. The child is well. <laughs> that ought to do. After all, how could I not tell him? And I'm certain he'll understand it. He really can't expect me to bore myself to death with moping. I found it last a long and lively friend. Those ancient monuments Robert brings to the house, they think a woman's nothing but a Plaything. And whoever comes to call on my account, they come to see the famous man. Then they are frozen stiff with respect for him. Awful. I need a friend of my sort, fond of talking, fond of walking. If he doesn't like it, I'll simply have to show him who is master in the house. Tobogganing. I hope you're content with your logic. Oh, wonderful. Then I
believe it. Frau von Hoop is getting a divorce. He's carrying on with an actress. Oh. Don't you think that the time has come to begin your work in earnest? Ah, that's just the problem. Your brother, did you say, refuses to help? But he could if he chose. He could if he chose. But he insists. I become a lawyer. What a good idea. How can you say that, Gnadia Frau? What could be more boring? Heavens! In my view, all that's important is that you should work. No. Those dusty legal columns. Larry, has Booby finished his piano practice? I think so, Gnadia Frau. Then he must have his bath and be got ready for bed before dinner. Venture. I'd like to offer a small suggestion and ask you just a tiny favor. A what? An enormous favor. From me? Since you are so friendly and take an interest in my future, well, what is it? I find my life so hard. I have only one ambition, to spend my life in nature study. Well, that's a pleasant life. Voyages to Africa, China, Spain, Serbia, Australia. Not my sort of thing, but an uncle of mine was in Alaska. Tell me, I think, for that, you must have lots of money. Yes, alas. Have you enough to pay your way to the university? Forgive me if I'm being indiscreet. Not even that. Well, then. See how you can. Oh. <laughs> Captain Sturz has resigned his commission. Reasons of health. Huh. One knows what that means. Disreputable reasons. He was an escort of mine, a charming lieutenant. Then later he became a bore. Hm. Serves him right. <sighs> what did you say just now? That, alas, the money. For my chores and studies are lacking. Well, I've no idea what you should do. But there are scholarships, and there is, so to speak, patronage. Scholarships? You must find a way to get one. I fear I haven't the right connections. But there's no patronage, perhaps. My husband would assist. You think that he might help me? My husband, of course. I've written a letter. Told him all about you. He often helped friends before. You've no idea how good he is. He's from a most eminent family, nobly born and bred, knows all the right people, and practical as well. He always knows the right way to do things. They often say that men of genius are inexperienced, and useless in worldly matters. 
I'm more than content to have made the acquaintance of his charming wife. Hi, hello. Speak of my husband with more respect. If there is anyone who can help you, here's the one. Do you think so, Gnecha Frau? But your husband doesn't even know me. Ah, oh, but I know you and know you well. That's enough. Only what only I do assure you that I am the kindest husband on earth. Would you believe my husband has never, never said a I ask? No, and then we have disagreements. We are not. much good at conversation. <laughs> of course, I didn't actually write that. And that you are a delightful cavalier. Perhaps you'll even be a shade jealous for once. No, no, I simply had to let him know that you'd be Let us hope you can still be here to meet him. When he gets back again, Alas, I can't. I have to make other arrangements if you can make a frown. You heard me tell you just now. There's nothing I can do other than strolling through escape, escape. Should you say just now what? You wanted us to be the best of friends. Yes.
my trunk up here. You surely don't want to leave us already. I may have to. Oh. And no doubt she thinks that I should spend every evening sitting with her as her companion. We know what that means. How oh, well this evening I intend to enjoy myself. Maybe reading papers other is the only pastime she knows. God, what a bore. And then she starts again. When will you begin your studies? A perfect school, ma'am. And yet, on the other hand, she's charming and bright. She believes in my migraine, not so bright. What if I should make a whole declaration of love? She's perfectly capable of answering me with a hill of praise in honor of her dreary old husband. I'm already love. Good God, what cheek. Get out of here. What if the Frau Notarin should see you and tell my patroness? I only look in. Ten minutes. So let me try once more. While we are walking, I shall slip my note in her hand. That's when her mood is most melting and sweet. So, my first and last attempt. Most honored, gnädiger Frau. So kind and understanding. I did not care, did not dare tell you in words all that my beating heart yearned to tell you. Forgive me then if I try to put into writing.
wicked fellow. Oh, what a pity. All the same, it just won't do. I've taken the liberty. Not like that. First, wipe your feet, if you please. It's easy to see you're not married. <laughs> Destroys friendship. I'll pay it all back with interest. Better to make it a present and then forget it. That's what Robert says. Couldn't you give lessons? Others do it. Not while I work hard at my studies. Impossible. Well, in that case, I have no advice. From my husband. Oh, no, it's for him. Excuse me. Another begging letter? Another hopeful librettist? No! What? What's the matter? Unspeakable and mild! Tell me! Take the liberty of sending for you.
hasty trap, a monster. He is a capital fellow. Only his wife is simply terrible. You've got a grudge against his wife. I'll say the way she treats me. Nevertheless, she's really a capable wife. For him, perhaps. Cookie. Who leads? I do. Knaves are trumps. Ace. You see, he loves her tremendously. You should see the way she treats him. Even in public. In my view, his wife is greatly wronged. She can be temperamental, perhaps too hasty. Schneider, you've got 29, 60 points to me. A little wild and thoughtless. Yet I am certain that she is kind at heart. And she takes good care of him. Oh, well, she may have her virtues. Everyone has. You happily have the virtue not to know her. Wait for the day you have got to know her better. Sleepless nights, I can tell you. Eighteen, eighteen, here comes Edgar. Just a minute, I'm not ready. Pass. Pass. Twenty-four. Your lead, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm here at last. I'm sorry I'm late. But the rehearsal couldn't be cut short. At the start of every season, you always have this tremendous urge for long rehearsals. But then when March comes, it vanishes. Oh, well, once in a year, if you singers only paid attention to what I tell you, then for three years, it would suffice you. You still can join in my stroke. You're just in time now to play this hand. Have you said your prayers this evening, Desdemona? Fifty-nine? Aren't you at a king? Fifty-nine and no jacks? This is going to cost you a fortune. Most finely played, not to lead your diamonds. You'd not have found it so easy to beat him. My favorite pastime. A game of scat, the only recreation after music. Especially when the ladies are absent. How oh, well, the ladies, you know I love my wife, most dearly, but at scat, it is pleasant when there are no ladies to disturb us. Every now and then the door opens, she pokes her head inside. Have the gentlemen not finished? Soon, my angel says, he's thinking the devil take her. Or else, and who is the winner? A mere excuse for her to come and see if her husband has won, whether he's lost, when they're back at home. Come. Watch out. It's not that bad. No, Lubert. Double. What? On a Lubert? Redouble. Just look at this. But why ever did you double? For heaven's sake, with two sevens, even so does look. No postmortems, just score it. Two hundred for me, your deal. How long are you staying here this time, maestro? Four weeks. Two concerts more as well as the other stuff. Your bit. Just a moment, I haven't sorted my cards yet. Ten. No such bit, solo only. Since when? We always play that way here. Well, 18 then. Pass. Pass. Shame on you. Stonewalling. <laughs> Leaving me with my 18. <laughs> Tonight it's the only safe thing to do. <laughs> Two jacks. You see now why we were stonewalling. Our trance, you might as well surrender. And how is your wife, Frau Christina? She's very well. I had a letter from her today. 
She's found a new friend to amuse her. He's good at sport. And they go walking, skiing, skating. Watch out, then, maestro. <laughs> no, my wife. But you don't know her. Uh, I know her well. Not really. Uh -huh. Just because at one time. One time. A dozen times. As I freely admit, her behavior was not together justified. However, that doesn't mean you know her well. I've no desire to know her any better. My nerves are bad enough. Are we here for conversation or to play scat? What about a round of happy family? Sorry, but when he picks on my Christina, of course I must defend her. I'll go grand living dangerously. What a stirring example of married life. That's the life for me, it suits me well. I'm always surprised, I've never seen you nervous. Heaven be pleased, thanks to training. That is something you don't like. That one trick, you wretch. Lucky fellow. Since I'm so lucky to have as companion a fine, fanciful person, but because of a lack of self control, is often helpless. Helpless! That is something I've yet to see. Yes. She's often helpless and lost like a child. That is with me nerves of steel. No such thing as neurosis. Lack of self-discipline. Oh, come now. You go too far. I stick to it. I believe it. Is there. And you yourself provide a fine example. Me, if I had a wife like her, I should soon be in a madhouse. Seems fine to me. Spite of your bad plan. I tell you, at the very thought of her, I begin to tremble. All the same for me. She makes a perfect wife of her. I serve my curls and lazy. My Christina has made me all the time. She also keeps me healthy. She keeps me clean and dusty. That's something she can do. Brush you off. You must not exaggerate. She's what I need. I need someone who's quiet and lively about me. Everyone's possessed of two natures. The difference is this. There are some who only show their good side. There are fine people who present an agreeable surface. While she, she is really one of those gentle, shy and tender creatures. But rough on the outside, I've met with many, and they're the best kind. Do you think she's a hedgehog? Or spiny and prickly? Excuse me, Jen. What's wrong? I hope it's not serious. Bad news, is it? What on earth can this mean? <laughs> Will you tell us, Priamona? <laughs> Certainly. It's from my wife. Tricks from the hedgehog. Don't give me, it's not a joke. But I hope it's not serious. I'm speechless. Read it. You know, Mitzi Maya, your betrayal discovered. We are parted forever. No signature. That's her way. My wife never signs a table. Has she gone mad? It's not the first time. That's quite enough. I said it's no joke. Mitzi Maya, so you know her too. Is she then oh, one of those? So, so, la, la. You know her. Slightly. Funny, I happen not to know her. That's what everyone says when they caught out. That's quite enough, sir. I'm sorry. I fully understand how awkward it must be when the little woman finds out. If only I could tell her what it's all about. Gentlemen, please excuse me if I leave you now, but certainly can't have lost their appeal. I must sort this out. Adieu. Red 
business. <laughs> Frank is dead, I will rant and rave. I thank my stars, I'm not in his shoes now. I've never thought of him, no, not a of him. A perfect model husband. Yet I'm sure that... Oh, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, Woman is a menace at the best of times, but when war's declared, oh, but they feel it. Bob is the source of his a friend of Mitzimaya. That really amazes me. I never have guessed. Well, what say you, my friends? Shall we play a little till we recover from the shock? Do you not think that one of us should go with him? Maybe keep him calmly. For I thought he was dreadfully shaken. I'll give him a ring tomorrow then, when he's had time to consider what he should do. This honor. I want a divorce immediately. So it's true. So it's true. What's true? Please forgive me, but my wife mentioned it. Your wife? How could she know? Well, he lives at our house. Who? My husband? No, no, the Herr Baron. Please stop talking nonsense. I don't want to be divorced from the back. Of course you don't. But perhaps on his account... Your magazines! On account of my husband! What? You say on account of your husband? Then I fear you must find yourself a different lawyer. I respect your husband too well. Far too well. Respect him too well? Are you men now as filthy as like a scoundrels who stick together? I really must entreat you! Just so, and for that very reason, I, as your lawyer, ask you not to insult oh, me. Oh, the simple truth is told you have no cause to feel insulted. So be it. Now let us begin again. You say you've come to me to obtain a divorce from your husband. That's what I said. Have you any grounds for divorce? Have you heard of Mitzi Maya? What's that? The grounds for divorce. Since that husband you respect so highly, has betrayed me. You men are scoundrels and worthless all. I beg you to keep to the subject. What 
leads you to this assumption. Assumption? Look at what she calls it, my angel. But who is this Mitzi Meyer? I have a wish to know she's a female. That's enough. But surely you need more evidence. Where is your evidence? I must demand a divorce at once. I lay claim to the child. still remains to be established. What? Well, can you be certain that the note was really written to your husband? Of course, he is the address precisely. And the confusion is out of the question. Out of the question? Precisely. Oh, I never have trusted him. I know too well what men are. Do you mean to help me? No, not until I've seen your husband. Not yet. Then goodbye. Curious, most curious. Who meets 
see Maya addressed that note. There was a note then. Yes, only not for you, the money for <laughs> me. Only she wrote your address on it. Wrote my address on it? Well, that's the end. I've come here directly from her. I thought that something like that occurred. For women never remember a name precisely. She thought that I was the great composer. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. She tried to find me in the telephone. Telephone book. But found, found your address there. <laughs> well, all I can say is, Mr. Shaw, I meet her.
I shouldn't have sent the Baron off there. Oh, where, Mayfrau? Well, to see that person in Vienna. Oh, but how else could you have made sure if she really knew the master? Mayfrau couldn't have gone there herself to ask her. But would it have done? Of course it wouldn't. I can't find the tablecloth. Then open your stupid eyes and look for them. They're not here. Which tablecloths? The damask tablecloths. But, Gnifrau, we sent them off with the luggage in advance. Oh, Teresa, never mind. They've been sent. I quite forgot. So stupid and slow, she should have known. Hurry up and bring me my black button boots. <laughs> tomorrow with necessary evidence your own innocent most delighted Robert <laughs> do you think it might be true who knows what sort of dirty trick the two might have cooked up between them. He wants to get out of it, so the other takes the blame. Hmm. 
Well, let's hope that the Baron is clever and doesn't get taken in. <laughs> Unfortunate confusion. Stroh, Stoch, Stroh. Anna, do you think it could be possible? With evidence arrives tomorrow. You're all innocent. Anna, do you really want to leave us? No more use for me. You're not stupid, just impudent. Herr Kapellmeister Stroh would like to see you. What? That villain has actually come here? He must have taken the night express. I don't want to be. Oh, 
Yes, I realize you were simply furious. Furious? I was hardly furious. I only felt that all was ended. But furious! To be furious with you, I have to you honor. Now it is all forgotten and over, and here you have what you thought you lost. Your faithless husband. Well, Christina, what's wrong then? Tragic drama has suddenly ended in her to us. I cannot find it comical at all. Oh, come now. So give me some time to recover quietly. I'll come to terms with my bitter confusion. Do you expect me to beg forgiveness? Forgiveness? What I have suffered cannot be disappeared. Do not say the fault was mine. Precisely, your ridiculous, impetuous temper. Mine? Now you've gone too far. Not my fault at all. Then who? Now that I am free from them. I'm not so sure. But then you've been in surely surprise. In this one particular case, perhaps. Only one never knows. You're damn well sure. Suffering all your sadness. If you've been sent for an ask me how much is for, instead of sending me those two ridiculous, incomprehensible, quite unanswerable cables, which almost drove me to madness. <laughs> Asked a lawyer to divorce you. You knew. He sent me a cable himself. Disgraceful! Yes, yes. he had a higher opinion of me than my own loving wife. Now this is really too much. When I like a kind of nature, he did return here quite ready to forgive you. I, you, of course. It's very been calling my part, and you make this stupid scene when you could make forgiveness. Forgiveness? All that I regret is the fact that I ever married you, and have I ever married at all? For God's sake, this whole affair has gone far too far. Just one in any bookshop. 
Oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, then. Well, then, I called on the lady. Lady? Oh, well, whatever you wish to call her. She knows Herr Hofkapellmeister Schor quite well. So she knows him. Who'd believe it? So read to me about him. In fact, he was the main reason for my return. You didn't think? No, only I did think that it's not a good idea that my wife should be left alone. At any rate, not for too long. That is shameful of you. I give you my word. There's no need to, I know, my gentle, loving wife. It's not proper that my wife should give cause for village gossip, malicious and idle chatter. And you know just how quickly the gossip spreads among your friends. I'm certain I always was. You And you everything all in this has ended. But did we imagine parting? Think of what life alone would be. Oh, since the guilty party was you, and that hands you thriving nobleman. I beg of you. Hey! 
for a thousand marks. <laughs> I must say, <laughs> little Christina, that must have been a blow. 